everybody and welcome! It's Vasco from the Angular University. In this lesson we are going to set up Firebase from scratch, we are going to set up the Firebase SDK and we are going to do our first Firebase query. We are going to know how the SDK and Firebase works under the hood, we are going to see how WebSockets are used by Firebase and how to debug them. It's coming right up! In order to have Firebase up and running, the first thing that you need to do is to go to firebase.google.com and you can sign in using your Google account. So in this case, I will sign in with the account that I used for this uh, lesson. So here we go. And then you need to go to console here on the top right. This will open your Firebase console. So now I already have here a project, but I'm going to create a new one from scratch. Let's call it final project recording and we just click create project and this will set up a new Firebase for us. Once this is done, you click on the project and you are going to open here the welcome screen. You can see here the tutorials for Firebase if you want, but in this case we are going to go straight to our database, which is empty. Now, take a look at this URL. So everything in Firebase has an URL. We're going to get into data modeling in Firebase, but remember this URL, this will help you uniquely identify your database. Now, before we do anything else, take a look at this informational message here. So default security rules require users to be authenticated. Actually, to start, we just simply want to give read and write privileges to everyone. We will set up the security rules later, but right now we simply need to give read and write permissions to everyone so that we can uh, quickly set up some data. Again, we're going to revisit this in the future. Uh, please don't use such a setup in production. It means that anyone could destroy your data. This is just a temporary setup to quickly get started with our development. So if we go back here to the overview screen, let's now grab the configuration to add Firebase to our web application. After a while, the config is ready. And what you can see here, all of this is public information. There are no secret uh, keys here. There are no private keys that you cannot publish in this configuration. So if we just copy it, Let's take this configuration and we are going to simply add it to our index.html and we are quickly going to demo Firebase in action. Let's start by writing some data in the database. So let's select the project and we're going to click here on the database tab. And this gives us the data of our database. We are simply going to say here uh, as a value, as a root value. Hello world, Firebase. Now let's read this value from our database. So for that, we need to start by creating a reference to the root node file, final project recording that we have here. For that, we're going to use the Firebase SDK. We're going to use the real-time database and we are going to create a reference to the root node. From here, we use the Firebase SDK to subscribe to this node. So we will see this in a moment, how does it work, but we're going to subscribe to value and we are going to pass in a callback. The callback will be called once the value is available in the browser. So we are going to be passed in the callback a snapshot. We are just going to pass it snap and we are going to see what the snapshot is in a moment. So for the moment, let's log to the console the value of the snapshot to see what we have. So we have the Angular CLI here running. We just hit Control S to save and the bundle is now available. And here we have just reloaded the application. So let's try this again. We just refresh the application. We can see here that Hello World Firebase shows up on the console. And so we have done our first Firebase query. Let's now understand better what is going on here. So let's switch to another view. We have here the same Hello World application and we just received here Hello World Firebase. Now, why is it called a real-time database? Let's just edit here this message. 
we hit enter and take a look at the console here. So we hit enter here, immediately in the application, the new value is reflected. This means that an application that is connected to a real time database can receive in real time, as the name says, new values for the data and in a very performant way. This allows us to build a whole new class of applications. Let's see how this is working. If we switch here to the network tab and we turn on the filter to only filter WebSockets, let's just refresh the application. So what is happening here is that the Firebase SDK client is connected to this Firebase via a WebSocket. Let's take a look. If we choose the WebSocket initiated by the Firebase SDK, which is marked here, we just switch to it and we see here the data that came over the console. Let's just try to change here another value. So hello Firebase again. And we're going to see that this comes via the WebSocket into the application. The on callback gets triggered and we receive the value of the data in the database under the form of a snapshot. The data is under the snapshot.val function call, but the snapshot contains more than just the value. Let's now try a more complex example. Let's create an object as the root entry of the database. So let's just call it messages and let's add shields to this messages object. Let's call it here message one and message one. We are going to add a property of text and a value of hello world. So let's try this out. We can see here that we have here created a messages entry under it. We have an entry with a key of one, which is an object which has a property of text, which has a value of hello world. So let's take a look at what we get from the callback. Let's modify this message and see what we receive here in the console. So immediately we receive the new value. Let's just open it up and under the key of one, we have the text with the latest message. As you can see, the real time database is very powerful. If we write to the database, we can see that our clients are being updated transparently and in a very efficient way via a WebSocket. If a WebSocket is not possible, the Firebase SDK will transparently fall back to an Ajax long polling request. And so you have seen the Firebase real-time database in action. And as you can see, it's really super powerful. We have introduced a couple of concepts of the Firebase SDK, a reference and a snapshot. Let's dig deeper into these two fundamental concepts in the next lesson.